My alumna, Dr. Moira Gunn, stands squarely at the nexus of technology, science, and society. Through her public radio program, Tech Nation, she has interviewed guests ranging from CEOs to scientists, venture capitalists to politicians, teachers to technophobes. From the moment we envisioned this event, we knew that she would be the perfect person to lead tonight's discussion. Dr. Gunn, thank you for joining us tonight, and we look forward to the conversation. And thanks again to all of you for being here. Thank you. And let me tell you why I'm such a big fan of Bud Weiser. Number one is name. <laughs> Not a lot of guys, name is that. But also, you've been such a tremendous support over the years, and you, there was nothing to interfere. Every so often, you said, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? And you've been terrific, and I just want to give you a big round of applause. <laughs> now, let me introduce the panel. First, we have Chuck Jones to my immediate <laughs> left. Uh, the Chief Design and Research and Development Officer at Newell Rubbermaid. <laughs> then, someone familiar to you all, Leah Jamison, the John A. Edwardson Dean of the College of Engineering here at Purdue. <laughs> then, Jackie Jones Royster, the Dean of the Ivan Allen College of Liberal Arts at Georgia Tech. And finally, Bracken Darrell at a, works at a place that, uh, that we're being, um, he's a mess of a man, is a really good thing. He is the president and CEO of Logitech. <laughs> now, we thought we'd start with a question, and I'm, I'm dying to hear the answer here. Um, and for each of you, um, Standing at the intersection of liberal, liberal, liberal arts and STEM, and you might reveal sort of your, where you think you might, your leanings are, um, what four buildings, landscapes, people, whatever you see, are at each corner? Chuck, let me start with you. Sure. Um, you know, so, so for me, I think that when I think about the intersection of uh, liberal arts and STEM, I always think uh, immediately of artists and technologists. Uh, you know, so, when I think about these things coming together, uh, I think about people like Leonardo da Vinci. I think about um, uh, you know folks that uh, you know have these Renaissance skills of being able to bridge uh, across these disciplines and to bring uh, great designs, great art, but also great technical solutions uh, to the world. So um, yeah. So, so Leonardo's on one corner. Yeah. So Leonardo's on one. Well, actually, I would say Leonardo embodies all corners. But um, uh, you know, a real I, estate developer. I, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got to give little Leonardo a little bit of credit here. Um, you know, but I think you know also too. I mean, if you look at um, um, you know great artists, uh, you know Pablo Picasso on one side. You know, you've got uh, you know someone like uh, Enrico Fermi on the other. Um, so. Both are problem solving problems in a very creative way, but a very different way. And I think that uh, how you begin to untap, uh, tap into and unlock how that creative problem solving process works and how you can begin to um, um, you know, really maximize that creative potential is uh, very exciting. So I'm going to let you off the hook on the corners. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you're yeah. the only one who gets that. I, I'm the only one? All yeah, right. you're the only All one. Right. Check. You get to go That's first. that. Okay, Leah, you. Okay, um, four corners. So, um, this is a mixed use neighborhood. There are going to be some <laughs> things on the corners and some things that are much more on the personal scale. Um, it, on one of the corners, there's the, there's the biggest skyscraper you've ever seen, and, and it, it represents the grand challenges facing the world. I mean, these are grand challenges that um, have to do with um, the people on the planet, the health of the planet. The quality of life, um, security, privacy, um, sustainable energy, and and also the quality of life um, in you know how we learn and the joy of discovery and these have these have actually been identified. They're they're sometimes called the engineering grand challenges, but and they were they were developed by the National Academy of Engineering um, as the millennium was turning. 
to say these are areas where the solutions to the problems of food, water, health, environment, um, and discovery, this is we can do. Will yeah. engineering will play a major role, right? But the problems are about humanity, and they will never actually be addressed or tackled unless they live at that intersection. So there, there, there's one corner that just simply talks about the aspirations of, of what role we play together in, in our future. Um, there, there's another corner which, for some reason in my mind, is diagonally across, and I don't know why that is, um, <laughs> is, is actually the, um, the political map of the world, which is absolutely traditionally the domain of the liberal arts, but there's always been a role of technology in, in how that map evolves, but I think now more than ever, um, you know, there, we never used to talk about cyber terrorism and cyber war, and by the same token, we never used to be able to watch YouTube videos of social injustices, no matter where they happened in the world. And so somehow the, the technology, I think, is changing how we think about this political world that we live in. Um, and then the other two corners are far more personal, and, and, I, and I'm gonna, I think about them from a, a, a very academic point of view. There, there are students in our faculty, and on one corner there are the, the, the liberal arts students and faculty who are artists and writers and historians and philosophers, um, whom I think the opportunity is to say, how, how is what they do and can do um, enriched, transformed, affected by changes in technology? You know, can you create something in those domains that didn't exist because the technology's there? And, and the diagonal one is, is clearly the one where I feel most comfortable, which are the engineering students and faculty who we always know have technical skills, but we really hope that they will be articulate communicators and understand not only the technologies they're working on, but the, the global context, the political context, the societal context, all of those other things that will go into making the solutions worthwhile. And the one last thing, and this is something I saw for the first time in Tokyo many, many years ago, which are intersections where all the traffic stops, but the pedestrians get to cross on the diagonals. <laughs> We can do this in West Lafayette at the corner of Northwestern and Stadium. <laughs> and you can cross any way you want. And that, that's the that's intersection. Only works. Yeah. Yeah. Jackie. Well, you do know how hard it is for liberal arts people to follow the rules, right? That's right. We're always wanting to redesign things. So. <laughs> I didn't know. Um, I thought you guys made the rules. Uh, well, yeah. we make them for other people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we're, we're I, just dumb engineers. We just follow them. <laughs> so I, I can't help but say that um, I don't like the corners thing. I'd rather have a circle. There you go. You know, and I want my circle to be pretty big. And I would want some smart kids of whatever age. You know, I think of everybody's kids these days since I'm really on the downside of the hill. But some kids <laughs> uh, in the circle. And I would want to say, we've got a few problems in the world, you know. We've got some problems with food and health. We've got some problems with energy and environment. We've got some problems with peace and security. We've got some problems with the economic uh, system. What do you think's going on there? Go at it. And then I'd at some point want them to turn to thinking very imaginatively about, OK, so what do you think we might do next to try to address these issues? And I wouldn't think of uh, particular people that have already made their marks because I really believe, given the people that I'm surrounded by every day, that the people that are around me are the people who are going to solve the problems. So I just put them in there and say, go for it. We need you to fix it. <laughs> and I believe that good things would come out of that process. Great. 
Well, as I have to say, as a mathematician and an engineer, you actually got all the four corners. So Jackie had just taught you something about, I did give you the answer, it was a big circle. <laughs> That's really out next time. Okay, the, yeah. um, uh, first off, I want to start this by saying, I absolutely love engineers, and I love scientists, and I love science. And that's why I majored. Uh -oh. That's why I majored in English. <laughs> that's true. So my, my four corners were at first I started with Da Vinci. I think you know you have to go pretty far back. I'm sure we could all go a lot farther back, but I, I did actually, despite being an English major, I followed the rules. And uh, Da Vinci was my first choice, and he goes back to the Renaissance. When I think of uh, the liberal arts and and uh, and the sciences or STEM, I really do think he's the ultimate embodiment. I suspect every engineering student so, sort of has in the back of their mind that 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 uh, Da Vinci's a hero, and every liberal arts student has in the back of their mind that the Da Vinci's a hero. So, uh, and they both own them. The second one, uh, the second corner is owned by none other than the uh, the obvious choice of Steve Jobs. Yeah, you know, I, I actually just bought a picture at a deep discount because I'm also very price focused. Um, <laughs> of of uh, on one, two pictures actually, one has Steve Jobs uh, when he's 22, and one has Andy Warhol when he's 22. And the Steve Jobs has the word art written across it, and the Andrew Warhol has the word business written across it. And I think you know Steve Jobs is just the embodiment of this. The, the third choice, um, the third choice I had was uh, none other than Zaha Hadid. I don't know how many people know who that is, but she's an architect, and you had to do what she does. You have to be such an incredible engineer because to construct a building, and if you go back and Google one of her buildings, you'll see it. They're so complex and so difficult. Um, on the other hand, they're so beautiful. They're really works of art. I mean, each one is a piece of art that uh, I think she's a good embodiment. And my last choice is completely different than the first three. How many people have read the book Thinking Fast and Slow? Just raise your hand. Not enough. Or Daniel Ariely's uh, Predictably Irrational. These are books written by social scientists um, about how humans really think and the biases we have. And it's a good example, I think, of where somebody who grew up in the social sciences is actually attacking things that an engineer normally would, but it has, happens to be on a human uh, behavioral front. He, he points out all the flaws in our thinking, uh, the, the, our natural desire to be affirmed when we have an idea instead of find somebody who disagrees with us. So those are my four corners. Well, you know, it's funny. I usually make up the questions and I don't answer them. It's kind of, you know, that's the only good news about my job. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought it was like, this was really a, a, an interesting question for me because I kept working on what the question ought to be. And I have noticed in the past that if you insert something, you know, we, we have the, at the intersection of liberal arts and STEM, it doesn't actually mean a real intersection. But whenever you inter, I, enter into this, we'll try to put it in a physical space, the answers change. It like integrates your, your, um, uh, your, your, your head or your brain, if you will. And so for me, it was uh, in one corner, I started with Sister Lorinda, who was my freshman English teacher in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and she was a battle axe, I'm telling you. Sister Lorinda would say, you spell one right word wrong, you have one sentence wrong, that's a fragment, which apparently is a mortal sin, according to her. <laughs> um, you know, a fragment, you start out with a C. You know, and I was like, oh, you know, we were 13 or 14, you know, okay. And so, man, she just was at us, you know. And she really was at us about how do you write and what do you write and, and how do you do it and you will do it. And, you know, darn it if we all didn't, one of my classmates is uh, the uh, famous British novelist Elizabeth George. She says, it was Sister Lorinda. <laughs> how was it, man? You know, we used to say, uh, later we'd say she didn't care about content. She just cared to get the structure right. You know, so that, somebody else was in charge of that. And so then I go to the next corner, and I got right here at Purdue, and my major professor was uh, Dick Garrett over in mechanical engineering. And, and um, here he had all of these all of these students, you know, and here I was, and I wanted to get out and get back to California, but they were kind of all ahead of me, and, and I said, I want to graduate in June, and this is like in November, and he goes, I got to tell you, Mary, we got, I got way too many students who can't graduate in June, and he goes, how about August, or how about next December, you know, and I'm like, eh, I'm leaving town, you know, and so I said, how about this, I'll just write you a table of contents, chapter one, chapter two, you know, kind of get it on, and, and then we can kind of go from there. And he, and he kind of stares at me, but I don't think anything of it. And then uh, I come back a couple of weeks later, and that's exactly what I gave him. I handed it to him in his office in a, in a, fold, in a manila folder. And uh, 
uh, and I went downstairs to the ME lab, uh, which I checked is still there. Everybody's tearing up everything on this campus, Mitch. You know, I got few complaints. Some of my normal paths across campus have been messed with. You know, so at any rate, I'm now getting old and crotchety. It's going to get torn up. Oh, oh my God. So anyway, I go into the old, in the old, and to be better. Okay, so I go over and grab a brick. Uh, yeah, I need a brick. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm, I go. I'm sitting in there, and in comes. Uh, Garrett, and he's got this thing under his arm, and he's storming into the lab, and we all go, <gasps> and I notice what's under his arm, and I'm like, okay, that's it, I'm never getting a PhD, I and mean, that's it. And he puts this thing down in front of me, and he opens it, and he opens up the papers, and he goes, look at this. And I said, what's that? And he goes, that's a sentence, that's a paragraph. It refers to a figure, which is right here, and it's correctly placed here, and here are the page numbers. You can graduate anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out, he was writing the dissertations of all the graduate students. So once you had the right amount of work done, and it was great, then he had to kind of help you over the hill, and he literally had to almost write these things. And of course, at that time, you could go through to get a PhD in engineering, never take a single English course. Now that just, so he's on the second corner. Right now he's going, yeah, yeah. I can use some help. <laughs> and so then, of course, I go to the next corner, and who's there? Leonardo da Vinci. You know, you don't care who you are, you study him. I study him, I still do interviews on him. Oh, his secret little notes. Ooh, let's do an interview. You know, so it's like he saw so many things. He didn't see different subjects. It was all one big thing. And his science is still good today. His engineering is still good today. And we wrote is so great. And his, his art and, oh, I mean, it's just incredible. So he's on the fourth one. And then it's like, OK, in the art. And then I go to this corner. And this corner is kind of interesting because I put Biz Stone on here. Biz Stone is one of the founders of Twitter. And I was like, what's he doing here? Well, he's an artist. That's where he started. So you ask him the share price of Twitter, he goes, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and now he's on to something new, jelly. And it's like, and I just see Sister Lorinda standing there and go, and I have new rules for 160 characters. <laughs> and you'd better follow them. And you'd go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Sister Lorinda, because he would not argue with her either. And so at any rate, for me, there's this big circle of people uh, that all make up everything we do. And they, they fit in absolutely what everybody is seeing. But it's in, in many ways, I feel like the intersection of, of arts and sciences are not just perspectives, but, but almost like different spatial visualizations that all have.